Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Matt Storrs, and welcome to Matt's Planning. On today's episode, I have somebody I am very excited to have on the podcast who is an expert in an area that I really feel that I know a lot about. Expert, please introduce yourself and tell us what you're an expert on. Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Mandel. And today I am playing an expert in tarot. I, and I use the word expert pretty loosely because I am mostly self-taught, but I like to think I know more than the average Joe. Interesting. My understanding of tarot is pretty wide. And it's interesting that you would use the word play at being an expert because my understanding of tarot is that it actually originated as a game mm -hmm. in Italy that was based on an Egyptian card game, very similar to Go Fish, but it was effective translation was Go Part the Nile. And then the, to collect the fish that are in the Nile that, you know, did not get separated because that's one of the big things about the Nile being separated, you know, or is, is it the Red Sea? Oh, <laughs> okay. So probably the Red Sea is probably, but ultimately separating a lot of bodies of water, very popular in Egypt. Yeah. And you would collect the fish by creating a dam system. That's where it started based on that game where people would collect the cards and there were different suits and there were cups. One of the ways to get the water out of the rivers or the seas was through the use of cups. And it wasn't until like the 1800s, 18, 1800, 1810, that tarot readings as we kind of know it today started up. It was around the invention and testing of the tin can. And what happened around that time is that a lot of people started using it for readings and trying to like establish empathy with people around them, just like as you're pulling these cards out and recognizing that you have similar suits or like, oh, this person has these cards in their hand. Maybe the fact that they have pentacles and cups means something. And that when you laid down what cards you had in front of you, people were like, oh, you got so many pentacles. Oh, you got the fool. Oh, you must clearly have this going on in your life. And that kind of developed. And what happened in greater society was a lot of people were getting lead poisoning. And this led to a lot or yeah, lead. lead. Pardon, pardon <laughs> me for that. We'll say caused. This caused a lot of people that were for lack of a better word, square, to become fearful of this new card game that all the cool kids were playing, that they were like, oh, this is just like this go fish game. Why is this getting this new hip way of playing it? They, through their lead poisoning, became so fearful that they started to like believe it was the devil's incarnation and these demonic things, even though it was a game that they had played when they were kids. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good portion of it. In more recent history, Nancy Reagan was big into tarot cards. She actually came up with the war on drugs and the just say no kind of campaign based on a reading, but that actually was a misinterpretation. The person that was doing the reading didn't understand the aspect of when the card is upside down. She was actually supposed to help facilitate drugs being legalized in America, not the huge tamp down on on the people using drugs, you know, get more rehabilitation, more investment in communities rather than penalizing people for their drug usage or addictions. And so I think that that's, you know, unfortunate that Nancy Reagan did that. But some of the things in that in that circle, in that cabal, if you will, of those Republican women, there was a lot of increase in tarot readings during that time period. So like, Barbara Bush, also very big into tarot reading, and throughout the Republican side and throughout politics in general, a lot of the policies that our lawmakers have led into in the last, you know, 20 to 30 years have been based on tarot readings. And luckily, they've gotten better over time. The Democrats, much better tarot readers on that side. They've really, really honed their craft. Wow. But yeah, that's basically my understanding of tarot. About how much of that would you say was accurate? You no, know, more of it than I was anticipating. 
in in terms of like the historic i would say like in the broad spectrum pretty good odds and in the specifics not so great but maybe i learned something you know you, you've said a few things that really piqued my interest that i need to go back and check historical accuracy whether or not it's historically accurate who's to say who i mean time is an illusion so i've heard that I, <laughs> um but we're correct in in saying that it is an ancient it's an ancient divination tool you know based on cards in fact playing cards with their four suits were originally what was used um, in the divination of tarot and Egypt sounds right as well. I have to be honest with you, Matt. I, I come to you with my expertise being more about in the actual reading of the cards as opposed to the history of oh, them. That's um, perfectly fine. What is what is your understanding about the reading of the cards? How, when did you get into that? I mean, I, I, I feel like I began to get readings maybe around 10, 12 years ago mm -hmm. when I sort of dipped my toe into it like anything metaphysical. And it's really been in the past four or five years that I began in earnest to learn the cards. And I will say something that I know is that if you are interested in reading cards, it's it's best to have a deck gifted to you than to purchase them for yourself. Why, why would that be? I think there's something in the energy exchange, something about like connected to allowing yourself to trust and be guided by whatever the larger universal energy as opposed to trying to guide it yourself i mean it also could just be a superstition but both of my decks that i have were gifted to me by friends and i don't use tarot really as a as a predictive tool as much as a reflective tool um, so you know there are obvious it's so it's made up of a tarot deck is made up of 78 cards okay 22 cards are the major arcana, which are basically the, the larger themes or archetypes. So you mentioned, for instance, the fool. And the fool is the very first card in the deck. And it's basically the deck is like the fool's journey through all of the archetypes and all four of the suits. So in a way, you could see yourself as the fool always, regardless of whether the fool comes up in a I reading see. or not. Oh, it's yeah. the hero it's the true hero's journey if it's you the will true, correct it, it is the true hero's journey and in fact i have a a Jungian tarot deck that i haven't busted into yet but there is some overlap in terms of symbolism and archetypes that are used in psychology that can also be used in tarot so that it's less about saying like being a fortune teller and saying this this and this will happen as opposed to this this and this are metaphors for the energy that's going on right now and you can do with that knowledge what you will but basically mm -hmm. the tarot reflecting whatever the current energetic state is of the current current being the, a the delicious fruit, fruit? The, i mean sure maybe if you're reading tarot cards for the fruit fruits also deserve their tarot cards read mm -hmm. the current being the person for whom the reading is being done I see. Okay. So the so there's the major arcana, which arcana, which are things like the fool or the wheel of fortune or death or the emperor, like larger than life archetypes that might speak to say like an umbrella of a chapter in your life, as opposed to the minor arcana of which there are which are divided, divided into four suits: cups, wands, swords, and pentacles and i like to see those as sort of like the little the the sections within the chapters they are more like daily smaller scale smaller scale things and cups each of the four suits is aligned with um, an element if you will so cups being aligned with water or feelings or emotions swords being aligned with air or intellect or thought mm -hmm. wands being the, the fire suit associated with creativity path inspiration drive and then pentacles being the suit of the material plane so anything that is like the body or health or job you know career i, I think of like sticking my hands in the earth I so see. their powers combined they are captain planet Arrow. interesting i, I always associated the swords with fire kind of like that energy of like smithing and like battle kind of associating it with some aspect of battle and war it's interesting to hear that articulation that's something i i didn't know oh, 
Yeah, well, I mean, you're not totally off in terms of battle or like mm-hmm. it's it's not it's not the fire element, but frequently swords, it being about thoughts and how how the mind can ultimately self-destruct, right? Like there I see. are there's a lot of there's a lot of con- and if you take it to its logical conclusion, like the nine and ten of swords frequently loathed cards to be seen in many decks you see the nine of swords somebody is sitting up in bed at night you know with surrounded by swords like they're having horrible nightmares and the ten of swords being a person laying on their on their belly flat on their belly with ten swords in their back which is basically Mm. like the ultimate conclusion of if you let your mind get away with itself it can destroy you like you can destroy yourself with your own thoughts absolutely Um, so yeah, I guess swords gets a bad rap, but you know, the mind is something that we have to deal with regardless. So it's like, can you aim the sword? Can you focus it and aim it at something that will actually be productive and helpful? So so we have like the, in each suit, numbers one through 10 of the minor arcana, which which shows a journey, you know, from from beginning to collaboration to conflict to whatever like each each suit unfolds differently but ultimately all four suits have gosh why am i wanting to call them the face cards they're not the face cards and it's not playing cards but each each suit has you know a page knight queen Mm -hmm. and 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 they represent different levels of mastery of whatever the suit's element is, right? So so the page will have, you know, a really beginner's mind energy, kind of like the fool at the beginning of a journey. Kind of kind of like Aang at the beginning of Avatar the Last End Airbender. Yes, actually, yes. And by the way, kids at home, definitely watch the show. It is so inspiring. 100%. <laughs> yeah. And then by the time you get to the king, you have the, the master of that domain. So the king mm-hmm. is is diplomatic and and is able to use the mind as a tool as opposed to be used by the mind or the king of pentacles is like a master business person um mm-hmm. the king of the king of cups is very basically able to harness the power that is in that suit without being overpowered by it and then and then you know there are various spreads you can pull from one card to 10 cards to the whole deck to sort of synthesize a picture of what's going on. Yeah, my favorite one is the pancake poll oh. <laughs> because because you get to flip it over and I feel like that adds some pageantry and excitement to it. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what deck you're looking at, but pancake would make a pretty good world card. The world, the world is the final card of the major arcana. Mm-hmm. And to know, and it's you know usually shows the world, and you have like four different creatures in the four corners, and it is a very it's a feeling of completion, right? It is a full circle. It is an Ouroboros, and uh, and it I would like to see a deck in which the world is depicted by a pancake. What is something about tarot that you feel surprises people when they first hear it? That you know, I think for people who don't have any foot or finger in the woo world, it can be intimidating in the way that like a Ouija board is or sort of sinister. Hmm. But I think that it can be used as a self-reflection tool, as a tool of self-knowledge and as a tool for for storytelling and seeing your own life through the lens of a story a la Joseph Campbell, The Hero's Journey. It's, it's, not, it's not literal, it's symbolic. Thank you very much for sharing this with all of us today, but especially me. If people wanted to find out more about tarot or wanted to find more about you, where would you recommend they go? So for tarot, I actually really love this book, The Creative Tarot by Jessica Crispin. And I just began reading Tarot for Change by Jessica Dore, which are both very modern interpretations. But I feel like, and I know this is crazy, if you Google it, Biddy Tarot, B-I-D-D-Y Tarot online is a really fantastic and accessible resource. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, Instagram, Instagram has taught me a a lot more than I care to admit. And if you want to know more about me, you can find me at, on Instagram at a flock of sandwiches. That's sort of where I hang out most on the internet, but I am, I am available for readings. 
if that is interesting. Absolutely. I will definitely let them know where to find you. Lisa, thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. I learned a lot from you. I would hesitate to say you learned anything from me. <laughs> My name is Matt Stores, and this has been Matt Splaining. <laughs>